What's up guys and welcome back. In this video we are going to be taking a closer look at the Sneaker X case by Cooler Master. In collaboration with JMDF, they have come together and designed this awesome MITX PC case. Straight off the bat you can see why they call it the Sneaker X. It literally looks like a sneaker. Never have you ever seen a PC case like this. I mean, they've made all sorts of open frame PC cases, but this has got to take the cake. It doesn't get any better than this. And being a sneakerhead myself, as soon as I saw this, I just thought to myself, I would love to own it. I wasn't willing to pay over a thousand dollars for a PC case like this. So the minute I saw this on a special, which was from $14.99 down to $7.99, I just jumped on it because it wasn't justifiable to spend over a thousand dollars on a PC case like this, especially being an MITX. I get that it is very rare, very unique, and the design is far from anything you've ever seen before, but I just couldn't justify spending that type of money on a case like this, especially when it can only fit so much into it. When I saw it for $7.99, it was almost a no-brainer for me. Now, the whole point of this video is I just wanted to show you guys how this case comes apart and just what's in it, what you get with it, but most importantly, how you take it apart. For most people, taking apart a case like this would be very scary. So I wanted to show you guys that you can do it. It isn't too hard. You just have to be patient and go very easy because it is made of plastic, aluminium, and steel, but these main parts that cover the entire case is mainly plastic. Steel is on the inside, and aluminium would be just certain parts around the case. But this is plastic, so are all these here. It's also plastic down the bottom here. Check out these cool little suspensions they have on both sides. You've got one here and one here as well. It just looks so good. And then you've got the Cooler Master logo here in a nice aluminium red. Then you've got the Cooler Master logo here and the Cooler Master logo here as well. Looking on the back, you've also got the Cooler Master logo here as well. Cooler Master have definitely made it known that they contributed it to this PC case build. And I can see straight off the bat that you've got a power button right there. And on the other side, this is going to be your RGB button so that you can cycle through your RGBs. Now let's take this case apart and let me show you pretty much how you go about pulling apart this entire case. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this back panel here. It comes off in one piece. So you've got two thumb screws. You've got one on each side here and here. So let's remove these two thumb screws. Now the thumb screws do have washers on them, so don't lose them. We'll set that aside. And then what you want to do now is basically pull back a little and then lift like that. And that comes out. It's locked in via this tab here. And you can see that it's got like a little lip at the bottom here. Next, we're going to pull off the front part here, pretty much like the laces of the case. You've got another two thumb screws here and here. You've got to remove these two, so we'll remove these two now. You can't miss these thumb screws, they're pretty big. Set them aside. You want to lift and then pull back a little and then lift again. That's how it comes out. So you need to be careful because you can't just pull it out. This part here at the front locks into this part here at the front. That's how that comes out. And now you can see pretty much the whole inside of the case. I'm gonna show you how to remove this center panel where your motherboard goes and where your PSU is mounted. Speaking of the price, $7.99 is what I paid. But the reason why I thought that was okay was because they also supply you with a few parts to make this build a little bit easier. You can see here, you get a 850 watt, 80 plus gold power supply. You also get a 400 millimeter PCIe 4.0 riser cable by Cooler Master and a 360 AIO already pre-installed. And this is the Flux Edition Cooler Master 360 liquid cooler. So, you know, some decent parts that are definitely going to help you build a very decent PC. Right, so on either side, you've got these two red panels, right? We're going to remove this side first. So there are two screws to this part here. There's one there, and then there's one more right at the top right here. Undo this screw. Just above the fan screw, right here, there is another screw. So just remove that as well. You can already see this is loose. Once the screw's out, just lift it straight up. You have two securing tabs on the bottom. Now, let's look on this side here, and we can see we've got another screw here and two more screws inside here which secure it to this logo. You need a smaller screwdriver for these two screws because the screws are a lot smaller. I'm just going to remove these two first. That's those two out. We need to remove the screw at the very back. Put our screwdriver in. Okay, with that removed, we can now just lift this out just like the other side. Let's remove this Cooler Master logo here. There's just one screw that secures it down. There's a screw just here. Let's remove that. As you can see, it flopped down straight away because you've already loosened the screw that holds it. Logo's out, set that aside. Now what we're going to do is work on removing the power supply and this center plate that holds the GPU, motherboard, and power supply. 
All right, so now you guys have a better view. The first thing we're going to look at is simply this 2.5 inch SSD slot. You just remove the thumb screw here, lift up, slide it out, and that's it. You can see that there is a PWM hub inside here. So that's where you're going to plug your fans, and that's also a split 5 volt 3 pin hub as well. So when you press the button, press on this button here, it's gonna cycle through the RGB colors. There's a 5 volt 3 pin that plugs into it, which is right here. Remove this bar here because this bar locks in this center plate as well. There's two screws, one on each side, so let's remove those. And then there's one more on this side right here. Okay. To get this out, we just have to pull back a little and lift straight up. If you look at this, it protrudes just a little bit. If you look on this side here, you've got a square on this side, and this sits in there, like that, allowing it to lock in when you go to reinstall it. Next, let's just take off this bubble wrap for the 360 AIO pump. When you look at your tubing here, you can see that you've got two sets of tubes. You've got the one for the pump itself, and that runs to the radiator, but then you've also got another tube right here. Next, we've got two thumb screws. There's one right here, then there's another on the other side. Right here. We're just gonna remove these first, just so that we don't have to remove it later. It basically locks in this cover plate that covers the radiator. What we need to do now is remove the power supply bracket. Remove this cable out the way plugs into the power supply. When you look at this power supply bracket, it connects via two screws. There's one on this side here, right? And then there's another on this side right here. We'll remove those screws now. Two screws removed. To remove this, we need to slide it up because it's hooked in via these tabs here on either side. What you need to do is lift up and then pull back a little and then just raise it out like that. You'll see how you've got these two tabs on either side here. They hook onto these gaps here. It's a fully modular power supply as well. I can see that there are four screws that secure this center panel down. All right, so if you look inside here, it's going to be easier for you to see when you do this yourself. But for now, I'm going to try and do my best to show you where they are. There's one there, there's another one here, and another one here. And then there is another one just here. I'm unscrewing it right now. There we are. Set that aside. Now we'll undo the other three, which is one here. In order to remove this screw, we're gonna to have to remove the stand from the motherboard right here because it's in the way. So you get yourself a five mil hex coming from the side here and just remove this motherboard stand first. That way you get access to the screw. The last thing you wanna do is thread your screw because you tried to come out on an angle. Now we can get to this screw quite easily. Just unscrew it, remove it. The last screw right here, undo that. And now this entire piece is gonna come straight out. Look at this. There we are. And that's how you can install your motherboard first and then put it back in. And now you get a better look at your entire platform. It's actually quite spacious in here. Your GPU is going to be approximately this long, which is 300 millimeters, 305, I believe. So you will be able to get a decent sized GPU in here. Let me show you how you remove this panel here that everything sits on. You grab on it and you lift and it will unclip and slide it back. And that releases this panel with the riser cable on it. And that is basically our entire PC case taken apart. All that's left here is the radiator itself, and it installs just like any radiator. You've got a total of 12 screws that secure the radiator in place. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. It's all there, all the screws, you can see them all. You can build the entire PC just like this. So here's the bottom of it, and here's all your cable management. As you can see, they've already daisy chained everything together, routes to one port, and then it plugs into it so that it all powers everything up. It plugs into the hub that I was showing you earlier. Inside here, you can see that's where your hub is. All you have to do is plug in the cables that come straight off the pump, which is this PWM connector right here, and the 503 pin that's going to control the RGB on your pump. And that's basically it. That's how you take apart this case to this point, allowing you to build in it. Now, let me show you the accessories that they give you with this case. These are the two boxes that you get. The first box is going to be everything for your motherboard. They've given you all your mountains for your case and your AIO. So you've got your AM4, AM5 mount. This is your Intel bracket. And this is your other Intel bracket. 1700 and 1200, all your stands and thumb screws, etc. And of course, AM4, AM5 mounts, Intel brackets, all that stuff. In the second box, you get, I'm guessing it's going to be your cables for your power supply. Straight away, I can already see that they've given us a 16 pin cable. So that's going to make cable management so much easier because if you had to plug in three separate eight pin cables, the cable management on this is going to be a little bit hard because of the lack of space. So it's great that they've already supplied you a 16 pin cable that is nice and short, easy to route. So that's great. 
And of course, your typical cables like your 8 pin GPU, 24 pin ATX, SATA, another SATA, CPU cable, 8 pin splitter, Molex, and of course, another CPU cable in case you want to overclock. And that's all the cables that you get. So, you know, everything you could possibly need for a good build. You even get a SATA cable as well. As you can see, that is everything that you get with this cool ultra rare PC case. Once in a lifetime opportunity to buy a PC case like this. Now, I'm gonna show you how this all goes back together. In order to get this back together, we need to reinstall the top panel. There's a certain way that this goes in. So if you have a look here, you can see that you've got this lip here. That needs to slide in on this side here, right there. Slide it in and then this clips in. So you push straight down until it clips back down and that's it. Now you install your two thumb screws that secure it into place. All right, two thumb screws. Remember we took them out earlier. Put back in. You then grab your center panel, which is this here, and you reinstall it with the riser cable on the inside like this. So you line up all your mounting holes, which are gonna be these four. One, two, three, and four. And then install your screws one by one. I'm gonna put in the middle one first, just so I can get the motherboard screw back in as well. Get that middle one in first. Now we'll work on that screw right there. And then we've got one more on this side right here, right there. And the last one, just underneath our GPU slot, right here. Perfect. Center panels back together. We need to put back in our motherboard stand. Line that up and screw it back in. How easy did that go back together, guys? Now we're gonna reinstall our power supply back in. Now remember that we have to hook it back on with these tabs here, all right? And then your power supply has these slots here, one on each side. So come in like so, line it up, line up your tabs and then push it in and let it sit down, that's it. Now install your two screws, right there. And the other one is on the opposite side, right here. So we'll just get this one in there. There we are. Let's put back in our 2.5 inch SSD. Just push it in, set it back down, and thumb screw it back in. One thing we need to consider before we put this back in, we actually need to have the AIO tubing at the bottom here, because coming from the top here, you're not gonna have enough slack in order to reach the motherboard CPU. So what we need to do now is remove the two screws again and we'll put our AIO back in first, route the cable to the bottom. Only then can we um, put in the PSU. Cooler in, we get our power supply and we install over the top of it. That's the only way it's going to work. Now we can reinstall our screws to hold the power supply cage. There we go. Now that makes a lot more sense because it will reach our CPU quite easily. The motherboard is going to go in upside down, so it makes sense that the CPU cooler can reach this area. Let's reinstall our Cooler Master logo now. When you look at this, you can see that there is a platform just here. That's what this rests on. So, sit it on that, line up your screw hole, and install. There we go. Now we can install our plastic panel back in. Remember that there are two screws here, so it only makes sense to use the panel that has two screws. Right there. Line up your tabs at the bottom here, these two. So there's a slot there and a slot here. Insert them in, like that. Then you line up your screw holes and screw them in. Now about two smaller screws. They were the much smaller screws. Line them up and then screw them in. Just like that. Then you just got that one screw there. Just the one screw on that side. So, same deal. You've got these two tabs here, one on each side. And you've got the, where they line up with, right here. Line them up, follow the curve. Grab your two screws and install. And there's one more just at the back here. Just like that. Lastly, we've got our bar that secured the plate here, remember? So one side has a little square. You'll see it. Ensure that that sits in this square right here. Line it up, push it in so it sits in it. Pull back a little so you can line up your screw holes. Now just screw in your screws, one on each side. There we go. Now it really is just a matter of putting back our plastic top pieces. You can see you've got two screws at the front right here, all right? All right, you see those two holes there? They kind of sit in where these screws are. So to install it, you also notice that you've got a tab here as well in the middle. That has to slide in underneath. So what we want to do is come in at an angle, like so. As you come down, push forward so that it locks back into place. That's it. Then you line up your screw holes here and grab your thumb screws and screw them in. Just like that. Make sure your screw holes line up first. Don't just try and screw it in because you will scratch the plastic. There is a washer on each, so don't lose the washer. 
And don't go too tight because you probably will crack the plastic. Right, and now lastly, we have the back piece right here. If you look at it, you can see that you've got these two tabs here that have a little bit of an edge, right? This here has to slide into these two slots right there. So you come in straight on top of it, line it up, and then push down, and then push in, and then that will lock it in. Grab your thumb screws and simply screw them in. If I go too tight here, you just want to go in and then so it's snug. You can crack the plastic if you go too tight. Once you're finished, don't forget to remove this plastic protective sticker here. It basically just allows for a clearer, nicer view inside the PC case, as you can see. And it doesn't open up, it just stays here like that. And one of the last things I wanted to mention about this case is that they do give you an integrated PSU cable, as you can see right here, which plugs into your power supply. This reason being, they have already made a power supply port in the bottom back of the shoe. That allows you to plug in your power supply here and not have to worry about trying to wrap it into the PC case to plug it in. So, you know, thank God they thought of that because it would really be quite silly if you had to plug in your power supply somehow like this. That would just look absolutely ridiculous. So it's really good that they also thought about that as well. Another thing also worth mentioning is that you can even adjust these springs on here. I didn't realize this until I played with it myself. So as you can see here, you can loosen the spring so that it comes out more. So that's the loosest you can have it, or you can just compress it like real springs. So, you know, it's actually the real thing. It's not like it's just a gimmick or just some sort of display. It actually works like a real spring both sides you know it's the details that make a case unique and very different and the detailing that they put into this case just makes this case just amazing also thought it was worth mentioning that you can see there's led strips inside here and this part here of the shoe on both sides also light up in rgb as well this is the other side here and that will light up as well all in all i have to say that i am very impressed with this pc case i think it looks marvelous and cooler master have definitely outdone themselves this time i'm just so excited to do a build into this pc case and there you have it guys that is a complete disassembly and reassemble of the sneaker x by cooler master and honestly guys this mitx case is something else it really is I'm so excited to own this and most likely going to be having it displayed onto the wall somewhere with a nice platform. That way it will just sit on the wall kind of like a displayed shoe and it's just going to look fantastic. It really is. So until next time guys, be sure to stay tuned because I will be doing a full build in this PC case. I'll be using a 7800X3D, one of the best gaming CPUs you can get now and pairing it with either an RTX 4080 Super or an RTX 4080. Let's just see how we go. And most likely I might use the Zotac because they make the 4070 Ti Super with two slots as well as the 4080 with two slots as well. As always, I really hope you found this video helpful and it gives you a little bit more confidence on how to pull apart your PC case because it being so expensive, you really don't want to make any mistakes and break any parts of this. As always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mike's Vlogs, signing off. Bye for now, guys.